In this video, I'm telling you why every artist, including you, needs a multimedia team. What's up guys? Brandon here from KDMR Music. Now on this channel, we teach you how to succeed in the music business. And we do that through music marketing tips, uh, strategies for publishing and royalties, and also videos like this one, helping you understand who needs to be on your team. So if there's information that you need, and that sounds like something that you want, then hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell so you don't miss out when we post new content. Now, something that I see a lot is artists who, you know, they release music and then their social media is stagnant, stale. They don't do anything. They don't show, they don't have any photos, they don't post any videos, they don't post any content. And it's because they spent all their money and time creating the content of their actual music that they were releasing. And so they don't have anything to post in the meantime. And that's why every artist needs a multimedia team. Now, if you're not someone who is creative in other ways outside of just your music, then you should absolutely have someone in your corner who is, right? You're going to need a photographer. You're going to need a graphic designer. You're going to need a videographer all the time. In today's industry, consistent content is king, right? It's not enough to just put out a good album. You've got to put out a good album then you've also got to think about all the ways you're going to have to promote that album. And a little trailer to your album is not going to cut it all the time because it gets boring. It's too salesy. It's, it's, it's a turnoff if all you're doing is saying, buy my music, buy my music, buy my music. Fans want to know who you are as a person. Fans want to know who you are as a brand and you know what the idea of being a fan of yours is. One of the artists who I feel like got this right really early in his career was Drake. Drake, um, if you're not familiar or don't remember Drake from way before he got big and In My Feelings was a thing, right? Um, Drake started out, I'd say, like in 2006, 2007. And when I heard about him, it was late 2008, maybe early 2009. And something that he had going on was his blog. It was called October's Very Own. Now, what was cool about the blog was it was posted or there was new content posted to it like every day. And it wasn't all about music. There were uh, fashion choices. There were things that he was interested in just from an aesthetic perspective. Um, if a new car came out, he thought the car looked cool. He might post a picture of the interior of the car. And then, of course, every now and then he'd post an update like, hey, guys, still working on this mixtape. Here's a picture of me in the studio. Right. And this was before Instagram was even a thing and before Facebook had the pages feature that allowed you to reach so many people at a time, right? So Drake knew early on that having content and creating content around yourself and uh, that showcases who you are as a person is super important. And you've got to have the same thing going on. Now, for episode two of the Music Business Dreams podcast... Actually, I think it was episode three, but I'll leave the link in the description. Uh, we talked to Nance. Nance is an artist uh, from the Raleigh, North Carolina area, who probably his biggest accomplishment so far was raising $10,000 uh, on a Kickstarter campaign to put out his debut album. But in the years before that campaign ramped up, Nance was always posting new things on his social media new cool pictures of him in exciting places, uh, little recap videos of him performing around the country, all sorts of things to let his fans know, hey, I'm still here, I'm still creating things, I'm still working on music, and I'm out here performing at shows, so just because you don't see a new song from me doesn't mean I'm not working. And that got them excited. They were used to seeing him, and it, every time he posted, it made his fans want to know more and more about when his music was going to come out. So when it was time for them to support him via his Kickstarter campaign, they were more than ready and more than willing. And he exceeded his goal by over $3,000. And that's something that you can do too, but you've got to have the team in place. If you're not good at creating content, get someone on your team who is, right? I'm sure you have a friend who's got a camera. And if they don't have a camera, you can take really good pictures on your iPhone now. You can even take good video and edit it on the iPhone or even your Samsung. 
So there's no excuse for not creating good quality content for your fans to engage with. Get someone on your team who knows how to create multimedia. It's going to save you a world of trouble and it's going to keep you relevant at times where your audience may not remember you. So if you want to know more about how to keep your audience engaged and how to build your fan base, check out uh, my music marketing guidebook. Now, I actually created a free sample so that you can get some knowledge without having to pay anything. I'll leave a link to that free sample chapter in the description below. Until next time, peace.